Uh, because most of us weren't able to go to France and see the fight, experience the stuff, touch the PCs and try Unity. They're bringing it to us. So or tomorrow at 2.30 or 3.30 UK time. This man is the most... A box fight. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, Papino. Ah, oh, it's it's a great pleasure to be here, and it's weird to see you here live. We usually do internet lives, but it's the first time that we do this in public, so it's a massive great pleasure. I can't hear your mic very well. There's too many of them people live there and he's trying to do a little Q&A at the end. If you have any questions, it could be anything and whatever. We're here to answer them. In theory, we're meant to be talking about the office, but we can do whatever. We will also give you a presentation, general presentation for those of you who played it a while ago. So that in if you're a fan, people who don't know the game or have played it in the past are able to follow the game and what we're talking about today. So, the presentation is about 20 years of Dofus. What has happened in these 20 years? Yeah, he's testing his mic and they can hear him better. Let's go. So, we're going to talk to you about 20 years of Dofus. It's great because it's 20 year celebration this September. September 2004 is where we're all started. So, we'll retrace the whole history of the game from 2004 up until today. And then we'll talk about what comes next. He's curious to know who plays the game for more than 10 years and people 15 years, 20 years. Ah, uh, uh, he knew there would be some uh, hardcore players. There's a handful of people that have been playing for years and years. And it's awesome to see you guys around for all these years. And especially now during this celebration, the 20 year celebration. Hello, Persona. 2007. Let's go. That's insane. Good evening, Neil. So. Dofus is an MMO. It's a server where people can congregate and speak with each other, collaborate, but it's also an RPG where you have a character, you batter it, you enhance the spells, the characteristics, the uh, items. So it's an MMO RPG, a French one that started in 2004, specifically in Roubaix. It's the enterprise called Ankama. It's a company. It speaks to a handful of you, evidently. So it's a company that started Dofus and created a whole ecosystem around it. But we'll, we can talk about it, but principally we're here to talk about Dofus. So the whole thing started from nothing because it was a minuscule team that has uh, interacted massively with the community. They had a daily dev blog. So it started from a minuscule team that only did dev, dev blogs. So from a weekend, they started to prototype things and they thought we could do a game actually from this. And so that's when the adventure started. And from there on, it was peculiar in the grand scheme of games. Uh, it's oddly enough, it was the same year at World of Warcraft started. That's what the game started. And it, it had one strength over pretty much any other big games in that you could play with any sort of machine everywhere. Let's go into more detail. Dofus is a game that is two-dimensional isometric. So you can see a camera from the top. You can't turn around so it's not three-dimensional. It's a tactical game where you fight monsters on a sort of map like a like chess. It's a bit of a fishy comparison, but there it is. You cast spells and fight things on the map. <laughs> So it's the the style is kawaii, colorful style, massive uh, inspiration from uh, the Japan Japanese animation. For those of you that are big fans of uh, D Dragon Ball Z and other animes, that's where the inspiration comes from from the start of the game until nowadays. There is a <laughs> you're gonna love this one, chat. He's talking about the humor, which is everybody knows about it. It's a bit. Uh, risque to say the least, but they know it. It has been a feature since the start and he's talking about it now. On top of the style and the design of the game and the inspiration, they've thought we're going to make risky humor and make it a hallmark. That's why some people nowadays 
in the forum flag things, some uh, conversations and things like that with NPCs. And the answer is, it is how it is. You take it or leave it. <laughs> they started making jokes. It became really funny and then it stayed around. But today there are some wordplay that are very subtle, hard to spot it. <laughs> and the names of items, NPCs. So it's a really important touch. All those of you that know the items, there are some uh, weapons that have highly famous names that are quite risky in terms of it. So uh, this is very but well known. Since 20 years, there's a wealth of uh, of there's more than a hundred dungeons. There's a wealth of things inside. Loads of items. There's loads of things to do. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of dialogues. Uh, Fifteen thousand maps. Everything that needed to be redone in Unity, so we know the stats that are fresh in our minds. And just to end on the community side, it's an MMO that came out in 2004. And there weren't many MMOs around, but there was a big community that formed around it, which made it really important. You meet people in guilds, lots of friendship resulted from this. So it's quite rare for an MMO that starts from France in 2004 that has a strong community after 20 years 20 years of existence is incredibly rare and seeing a community that is still present in the game and nowadays here every activity that we produce for you is still present for it's just and also there's not just a french and francophone community it's international we have Amer latin america lots of moroccan players uh asia uh, it's incredibly diverse and widespread community. So for accessibility, accessibility is one point that we want to discuss a lot today. Back in the day, it's a tool that was made on Flash. It used to be a tool designed for web development, which means it wasn't very demanding as far as computing, which means you could play on a, on a, let's call it a potato that they use different one but we do have some screens from back in the day to see what the evolution of the game are. we can see that we have gone very far since the start we have some images to show you for those of you who raised the hand from the last question from the 20 years this is what it looks like this will bring a lot of uh, souvenirs the beta the closed beta in 2003 was released and this is what it looked like you had eight classes you can see at the characteristic level, we're not very far. <laughs> Some items that you can recognize, like uh, the belts, the weapons. 2003 was incredibly particular. So for those of you that don't know the game back in the day. Oop, I missed that. 2003 has a special flavor. Because for those of you that don't know the, the game of back in the day. Incarnum, for example, did not exist back in the day. You spawned directly in a machina. They have uh, sound issues. Oh, I like it. I think they're looking at the cosplayers or something. <laughs> Cheeky mongrel. So the game has evolved massively from the time. You can see the characteristics are still present in, in retro. But for the rest of it, Incarnum didn't exist. You could only meet in a machina. It was a game that was very PvP oriented. You can see... Uh, the first initial matchmaking system back in the day, the Astel, I don't know what it is. So the whole game was designed around PvP. From the beginning, you had only a handful of uh, monsters that that exist. Yes, Potato Pok, I'm so hyped to try the beta. In fact, I've started a uh, visa application with the French Embassy. Because I'm, I'm not British, I don't have a passport. So in order to go to France, I need to apply for a Schengen visa that allows me to enter Europe. And with my Moroccan passport, it is quite tricky to obtain this because they have a big history and past of denying Moroccans visas because they think we all want to go there and never come back or some shit like that. There, there might be some truth to it, but I'm not definitely not part of that. Uh, so I put an application in to try and get, I, I don't know whether I'll be granted the visa, but I'm dying to go to the convention, try Unity before... I mean, the beta will be released by then on the 30th, and I will be testing. I'm so hyped for it. But yeah, I'm looking forward to try the Unity beta. I don't care for having my characters. This is a question that has popped a lot during their lives. Will I be able to play my character in the, in Unity? It doesn't matter. It's a beta. 
you won't have your characters from the start. You will be able to test what the game engine is, but with one optic in mind. You need to keep this in mind when you're trying it. This is not the final definitive game. You're seeing how you like it, what can be improved. You're getting hyped for it to be released. Hello, Westlakes. You're seeing what the game will sort of look like if they better all the stuff that isn't doing well. So the goal of the beta is not to actually start the gameplay and do the farm and start rushing. You can do that, but you have to taper it by knowing that you're trying a new engine. You're trying to find the problems with it. You're trying to get ahead and anticipate the issues that you are having right now. So they have the time to modify them. I just like to remind everyone that the longest betas that we've ever had were like three, four weeks before a new update and class revamp and whatever. This is three months minimum of beta testing. So try it, but always with the optic of what uh, can I tell them now? that they can change over the next three months to make the release so good for me so I can be pleased with the final thing. Make sure... <laughs> I feel like Potato Punk and Gluto are forming an unholy alliance of let's buff the Zellor. <laughs> they did mention the Zellor a handful of times, but I don't think they have the time with the whole thing of Unity kicking off to actually stop and revamp it or anything. No, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. We did have some nuggets of um, information from the Q&As they've been having. And I'd love to go over that if I still have the energy at the end of this. To open the actual and camera lives and skip to the English part. And then uh, do the Q&As. Because there were some really interesting questions. Like the creature mode that Jay's been asking about. That's where I heard it from. They've literally asked the guy who was holding a microphone at the end of the day. Will there be a creature mode? I'm like, no, there won't be a creature mode. We're working to remove it. That is not an official press release. It was during a conversation, but it is how it is. We'll see what goes. Uh, this stream is... Uh, I'm, I'm starting to feel slightly better at Slicks, and I thought, I've watched this, and I don't know that many people have watched it. This was at the start of the Japan Expo, before they went to the stands and let people try the PC stuff the unity fight and stuff like that. Uh, they've had a little press of one hour and I love the Q&A at the end of it so much that I thought I need to translate this and bring it to you guys because I'm starting to think more and more and I'm repeating myself here. The Q&As they are, have been doing recently have been gold. Mwah, absolutely beautiful. Because people get the chance to ask them a direct question. Like we've done, if you remember. Uh, is this uh, affected by prospection? And then they are just thinking about that. And they tell you, yep, or nope, it doesn't get affected or whatever. So I'm looking forward to the end of the Q&A. But I think there's a lot of value in the whole presentation. Where they go from 2003 and keep going until today. What has changed, all the cool things, the big milestones. And what they expect for the future. With our help, obviously. Uh, after we try the beta in Unity. So the game was generally PvP oriented. There were a handful of monsters present, but the emphasis was player versus player. And we have to recognize this electric blue that is very recognizable on the beta that doesn't exist anymore, but it reminds us some really good souvenirs. We have some really good images as well. The beta lasted for nearly a year and it's September 2004 that we've actually had the release. And that's why we're celebrating the 20 years in the September this year and you can see we've dished the blue electric and that's after the release the success started there were more and more people on the server and in France that was the talk of the hour when it released yeah for those of you who played you saw it in the news you saw it in the media it was a hit so and we were talking about it in the school hallways and yeah People that were talking about the, the image here, it's Tenela, not Tenela. It's a really big distinction. It's a big, because <laughs> this is where you were born. In French, Tenela, you were born here. So since September 2004, loads have happened. We won't go in detail about everything that has changed and happened. We won't be able to do so in 45 minutes, but we'll try and mention the big highlights to see the evolution and... Just the highlights 
Sorry, I had to ban that bot. So, you're already mod, uh, Eslix. We won't be able to go over everything in 45 minutes, but we'll try and go over the most important points just to showcase the evolution and see what the evolution of a 20 years, just to give pleasure to the people who have played it for 20 years. Here, there's an important point that has made the identity of the game, which is Bonta versus Rakmar. And now he's pulling the, the chat, the people. <laughs> people are booing him when he said Bonta. Yes, the Brackman. Now it's cool. He's Brackmarian, I suppose. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, these are the two principal cities in the game. And there was a rivalry between the game. Uh, the goods and the bad. The good and the evil. Brack and Bonds. And also, as I was saying, there's... There was, um, you had to re to spread people over a handful of servers. 2005 is where we started servers because we couldn't cope with the population all being in one place. So we had to start layering and opening new ones after. So after the beta, we literally were knocked to the head. We couldn't fathom or, or comprehend what was going on, the number of people. And then you had people who would come and say, I'm from this team and that team. It was something that people were highly attached to. Uh, you have to activate the Meslix by uh, the little setting, chat settings, and then you click show mod icons, and then uh, they surface. This is something historical that will stay with us. And also, 2005 is the beginning of transmedia. It's something that we'll present throughout the presentation. It's something that is really important for Akama, which was making things linked to the game Dofus. So in 2005, the first transmedia was the reveal, the revealing of the Dofus manga, let's call it. He's given the name of the guy who created the lore and stuff like that. And it has been finished this year. So it was the first um, step in a massive expansion of content to put out there for the lore, story, manga, and stuff like that. 2006, 2008. Sorry, I just saw glue to the pink dress. It's so Moroccan. <laughs> I'm not going to grace that with the common glue. <laughs> 2006, 2008 was a peculiar yet highly interesting year. It was the extension of Pandala, the uh, Kralov, Otomai Island, which were the latest addition in terms of content, 129, the most historic. Oh yeah, that's, most people, that is true. Most people, when they feel nostalgia or talk nostalgia, it's 129 because of the massive expansion that has happened in such a short period of time. In two years, you felt like the game was sort of growing at a humongous rate. You had all these new islands to discover. Uh, Kralov, which made everyone dream about getting it and fighting this mythical thing that was level 8000 or god knows what um some new systems that were introduced like breathing mounts uh and the first time they've introduced anything that isn't conventional in terms of server uh server heroic so hero server which is sort of like a uh, current day shadow but much more draconian in terms of rules <laughs> How many of you managed to finish the ochre <laughs> quest? Big GG to all of you who managed to finish. To explain in very few words, it's a quest that makes you collect monsters and the rare version of those monsters called the Ark Monsters of the entire game. Knowing very well that the Ark Monsters had long respawn times and stuff like that. It was a quest that was incredibly complex, but which means either too many too many hours of game or too much karma spent on the packs in order to get the pack. So big GG's for those of you who finished it back in the time because it was really, really difficult. And during all these years, 2006, 2007, 2008, there was massive amounts of content like uh, Breeding, Drago Turkey, a new server, Heroic. So there were bubbly years in terms of design, additions and stuff like that before we moved to the uh, peak years that we call 2009. 
Just a little info for those of you that don't know Dofus. We're talking about the ochre Dofus. O Dofus ochre, and we're talking about Dofus. What is a Dofus generally? It's an egg of a dragon that is incredibly ra rare. There are six principal ones, and the first one that was integrated in the game, the first time we've implemented an egg that people could get their hands on in the game was the ochre Dofus in 2006, 2008. 2009, it was a massive announcement. So players have been able to see during the Kama conventions, knowing that there is one this year to celebrate the 20 years at home in Rube. Back in the time, there was also there was already an idea to make a port in because Flash, the technology back in the day, 2009 was already getting old and silly, and we started to see the limitations in terms of animation, character design, and stuff like that. So there was a will to already make a change in 2019, but we've started back then in 2009. The will has formed there. Which gave rise to Dofus 2.0. There were so many novelties during 2009. Uh, graphical changes, interfaces. It was a big year in terms of changes. Which means 2.0 came out. Which formed a big turn-in phase in our history. Um, and just to say, we are in 272. That means since we've moved to 2.0. The difference is staggering between then and uh, now there's a lot of changes that happened many many updates since, since 2009 and now we're still playing in 2.0 <laughs> as the principal client that we're using the flash one we're under 20 years and now it's like a gift at the end of the year the transition to unity started from 2009 we didn't stop there was an incredible series of addition for those of you who held their hands up that played for more than 10 years these were major times in our years in our progression the farming of uh, Boofmuth, the uh, sort of uh, the ice gobbles in uh, Frygost and stuff like that the Sacri farming in that area you have to know that every Dofus mag as we've said earlier has a distinct identity in transmedia so we've made magazines that appeared in a regular frequency uh, just to give you definitions uh, from the game hold on let me let me check so, lots of stuff is happening <laughs> yeah uh, I'm still confused why Volbis isn't one of the original six even though it existed for like 10 years before Ebony and Ivory Ochre was the first stuff is added that doesn't sound right can you think of any other one that was added before it Jay First quested one, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other ones were all droppable, yeah. This one you had to do a quest and gather stuff to trade for it rather than grind mobs in order to get it. Yeah, it's a small, subtle distinction, but that makes a lot of sense. I remember when I got back to the office and saw people saying, Frygost 1, Frygost 2, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, major update. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Hold on, let me put the chat. You have to know that every Dofus mag, as Bastion said it earlier, has a strong identity on the transmedia. So it produced magazines that would appear in a frequent, regular manner for whom we would give definition to the game developers so that... So... Ah, so they would give the definition of the eggs and stuff like that. In order, hey, dab, hey, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know. So that they can code them into the game. So they give them the lore and the ideas that they're working on in the transmedia side so that the game developers could go and make mobs that follow the whole story that we can interact with, farm, fight, and stuff like that. And it was about an intense three years for the players because every update, Frygost 1, 2, 3, four dungeons added, areas, patterns, different patterns, the mob d -lock. so they were really wealthy years in terms of content. And here as well, we had new classes, which was something major, without adding new dungeons. 
we sort of added novelty to the player base by giving them new classes, new spell kits, so they can test the same, uh, the same content, but with different spells, different game thinking modes, and we've added uh, new classes like uh, the rogue. Uh, mask and the Fogonaut. And here again, there were additions that were incredibly transmedia because they were added in the game. Uh, they were added in another game called Wakfu. And here we saw the Fogonauts as well on the Wakfu series added as well. The Rogue, which was very well known in the whole, uh, in the whole uh, universe. And the Mask Man called the Mask. So for Ankama, the transmedia is incredibly important. So every addition that we add in the game Dofus gets added to sort of the whole uh, ecosystem, work for whatever, whatever, whatever. So at that time, we had the 12 initial classes, so we've added 3, so we reached 15. And then we've added some more later on, but now we're at 19. <laughs> it would have been terribly tragic to stop at 15. <laughs> yeah. A new logo. This is... This bit right here is exactly why I wanted to translate this whole thing. Because I missed the bit where they were showing the new logo. But looking at it, it doesn't look new to me. This is the logo I recognize from uh, the game previously. Unless the new logo is the whole background with it. Which would be weird. A new lo Oh, the new logo was released in 2012. So ch it changed. So it's about 12 years that this... That I see. So the new logo was added in 2012 to mark a big shift in the way they think about Dofus 2.0. So not only did it see new classes, new content, new spells and stuff like that, but it also had a new sort of rebranding, a new identity. It no longer was... Because up until this point, 2012, the whole uh, communication aspect, the whole marketing brand identity looked a lot like the initial version, the retro as we call it nowadays. So they've completely moved on to a new logo, which is the one that you see right here. So, so for Unity, I do not discount the possibility whether an evolution would come uh, to the logo and stuff like that. We're preparing some things. It's not completely impossible for there to be some modification, but it is a raw logo that remains anchored in the identity of Ankama, its player base, their minds and stuff like that. It's something that has managed to travel the years. It was something that was very well designed because it stayed iconic up until today. 2014-2016, another transmedia new classes with the new areas we had the divine dimensions added <laughs> what the hell is that <laughs> so these things will become very important in the games the dimensions where ca ca people can go to the god areas of the new classes and so they could go into these three dungeons per area new um, new themes like uh, wave fights and stuff like that <laughs> Shadow mentioned. Not not yet, Chad. Not yet, Jay. <laughs> Hold your horses. <laughs> yeah. So characters can get into the zones of gods and then sort of do up to three dungeons with wave fights. So the design of them was a bit different with the wave fights and stuff like that. But new bosses and also new ways to explore the words that were quite different. Like Zelorium, for example. You had the notion of future and past. So the exploration cannot be done um, in a stupid way. Go into map to map. Yeah, so these were areas that were highly appreciated. From here to say that we foresee something new things for next year. I can't say more, but there's a lot of things that are being prepared internally. What? Excited? <laughs> what? <laughs> and here's an important step in our life. Here, we're try the game had about was 10 years old and we'll try new functionality. So here, for example, we tried uh, way fights, uh, ways to move in maps. So we didn't just want to add classical new dungeons. We're trying to renew the game in experience um, uh, because we had 10 years of history back then. And we're trying new things. And up today, 20 years later, we still want to introduce new novel identities in the game. And thing. if you want to test something new, come and join us in the Japan Expo. 
too late by the way for anyone that wants to test it now it, this is the last day and they're finalizing everything today wrapping everything up and then going back so you can't test the new one the the, the way fight however we will see tomorrow and it will be done live here i will live translate it in this channel tomorrow at 2 30 for those of you who don't know or want to see exactly when it's happening you can come to the event tab on the discord hold on let me just put the link for anyone that might want to join if you haven't already which i suspect most of you already are given that we've reached nearly 450 people on the discord that's about as good as it gets for the international community we could go higher surpass the thousand and two thousand but we'll have to have a big influx of hispanic speaking players ptbr and i don't know as long as anybody that joins speaks english i do not care where you're from as long as the language that is spoken at all times is english collaborate do whatever you want within the server within limits of course i've added the tomorrow two things are happening at nine, you can go to the Ankama launcher and see a new website that will appear where you can go and book your ticket for the convention, which is happening towards the end, the 30th, 31st. It should be here. I will add it after this. Well, let me put a note to add that. event tab boom so yeah the tomorrow two things you can get your tickets to uh they, they, they aren't for sale so you won't be paying anything at 9 a.m for me so 10 a.m uh 9 a.m uk time so 10 a.m uh, this is difficult with discord because i have to set the times for me so that maybe you see it can you see 10 a.m at your side by the way Essex, or is it 9 a.m for you too i still haven't got this figured out do you see 10? When you log in, you see 10. Cool, 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 cool. I have to put it on because I'm uh, GMT, so minus one hour. In any case, you won't be spending money to get a ticket. You're just buying an online ticket to reserve your spot and so that they can gather stats and information about how many people are coming so they can prepare a party for the size of people that are expected to come. So no need to rush and put timers and wake up before everyone and camp outside. The other thing is towards the afternoon, there will be an Uncam Alive where... Um, we will see the fight that we've missed during the Japan Expo. We will see the Unity fight being done. And I will do my best to try and get Manaya over to go over it together and talk about the fight and a little recap of the Japan Expo. But for now, let's carry on with the first initial... Um, this is the first hour during the opening of the Japan Expo where they've talked about 20 years of history. And we are at the level of 2014 now new dimensions, new classes and we no longer can test the new game in the Japan Expo because they're finishing today and wrapping up. So our objective is to always add new experiences to renew, renew, renew the experience for you. We also had a new game mode during this period which was the epic server or shadow server. Every server uh, in, in essence has a uh, definition we want a classical progression where you XP drop and then you grow until you reach the end, max level. This one in particular, if you die against a monster, you lose all your gear. It was a hardcore mode that was introduced with this server right here. It is still present in the shadow server currently. And it allowed us to have a new game mode, new difficulty, and to bring about a new novelty for a type of uh, people in the community that were looking for a hardcore um, play a, a bit of transmedia again 2016 a year that was a bit particular really important for the office but also <laughs> well, also the mobile version yes Jay. the port in took years it was in 2014 that the two games were separated and they started working on the mobile version but it was released finally in 2016. This version exists still nowadays and it's called Office Touch. It has followed a different route of progression. Uh, they started from the same basis, but they've completely branched out. So they have the different updates. They're trying to, because it's a mobile game, they're trying to match a lot more with the behavior of the players. Uh, 
that play on mobile. So more accessibility, faster fights, faster dungeons, because the game sessions on mobile are much, much smaller. Effectively, it was a game that itself was doing well. And we've released some new servers at the beginning of the year. So it's a game that has its own community, that has managed to build its own identity. And the two are not completely incompatible. And we have some touch players who are also the play office as well. There's an overlap of player base. The quests are different, everything is different. Anyway, 2016. I've watched this movie right here. 2016. It's called uh, Dofus Le Livre, the, the Book of Judith. And honestly, after watching this, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not lying here when I say it. it has changed the way I think about the lore of the game, generally. From the moment I finished watching this, I'm more prone and susceptible to, to actually read. I want to know more about this story because Juliet's cape for me was a cool cosmetic, but I didn't know who Juliet was. Jahash, most of us know and have heard of the word, but who is the actual Jahash? The hopper mage that has saved the world. And just seeing stuff like that, like Kirub, Kirubim, the uh, cat in Ashrub, he's so important in this movie. And it has completely revolutioned. Josh, sorry, Josh. <laughs> Josh, the man, the myth, the hopper mage legend. It has completely revolutionized the way. I approach the game nowadays and I don't discount at some point in the future doing a sort of restart from the beginning like a sort of Iron Man journey let's call it from zero to hero where you go back to basics start with a new team and actually enjoy the bloody conversations the lore the story like now I can't tell you a single thing about the story of every single Dofus. Nothing. I can't give you a single thing. For me, it's a checklist exercise. I open the wiki and then boom, 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 reach. Yes, I finished this quest. Let's go on to the next one. It's like a tick box exercise, which I disliked, but I might actually go back and redo that just so I can have a better idea about the game itself. I have been thinking about getting people over to tell me about the lore itself, but why not do it myself? Yes, I could bother um, Golden Spirit to come and tell me the stories and then summarize them and tell you them, but it will never be as good as if I've done the reading myself. Gone through the journey myself. <laughs> yeah, Rip Benjamite. He's a variety streamer right now. He plays whatever games he likes or whatever game is working at the moment. 2016. There was a, an animation series, Wakfu and stuff like that. But 2016 was the first year where they've, Ankama has improved on their ideas and tried to conquer a new audience by trying for the first time to make a movie. They went back to series, animation series and stuff like that. But that was immense to cater to the entire co cosmos by making a movie that caters to everyone, whether you play work for this or that, boom, everyone had something from it. So the team that made the, that recently made Landsture, so that's the Valonia story, and the team that makes the work for series have are the ones that have produced this movie. So it's the DNA of the enterprise of the company is to try new things, work together, and do things. Innovatively. So for those of you that are very old, that have played our games and knows the lore, Curie, which is a character that is really important, is an actual animator internally that has worked for the series, the movie, the work for animated series, and now is working on uh, on Waven. So we have big talents that we pu push forward, and he is definitely one of them. 2017-2023. Here. We say a lot of things, We've, we're just repeating ourselves, but there was an extra uh, new functionalities, new content. So here we've added a new functionality that was unprecedented, which is infinite dreams. Let's go! So you can do bosses and fights with ever-increasing difficulties to cater to the people who had done all of the game's content and needed a challenge. So we had... Huh? We've also uh, increased the maximum level. Oh, so a player could go beyond level 200. That was the first time we've introduced it. These are for people who have played for 15 years. The goal is to always find new things for them to do. 
and also the uh, coming of a new server that know them the temporary servers which are servers where we review the entire game design to bring new and novel experiences these are ephemeral experiences because these are servers that last for two two months but there are also servers where we have intense rushes big communities coming together and trying the new content so one to two so at the release we have six to eight servers and the last one that we had in the retro servers is also working so well that we have reached our technical limitations that we're discovering as we go which always surprises us but these are always pleasant surprises that um, bring pleasure to the community they bring them a new experience of the game uh, we all have um, we we have all grown up over these years and we want uh, we design these experiences for you guys to break out of your usual patterns and habits of game and try something new these are games and game modes which are facilitated accelerated progression and things like that and it's always a good experience for you to restart the game from scratch and lets you sort of benefit from the entire dofus content in a very sped up manner and one last point on this period the last two dofus that we've added we are we said earlier for that there were six uh, primordial it took about 15 years to make the primordial six all present so here you could get all of them and continue the principal story of the game and it is quite similar throughout a uh, difficult quest you can obtain them the six primordial dofus represent something heavy and big for us as players it's something that we dreamed of since we were kids and finally now we can put that our hands on it it's not nothing it's special Ah, we talked about Novice Retro just now. 2019, what happened? It was the release of a tiny little game that was there for the 15-year celebration of Dofus. It was a version that was updated and brought back to date. Um, it existed in the back, but we've proposed internally to port the game and make it a new baby that we bring to the world. Uh, we've mentioned the Temporis earlier that has happened on this version of the game, but that's when it came out. It continues five years later. It's the 2.0 is the elder brother, but 2019, the retro version is the smaller brother. So here as well, because it has its own community, we try to bring them something fresh and new. So retro is the game, how it was before we went to the new version 2.0 in 2009 so it's frozen in that sort of period it appeals to the nostalgia it's also a different an evolution in the way you consume the game back in the old retro as papino said the gameplay was quite oriented in mob farming rush bosses do them on repeat in order to drop in for like black rat and stuff like that but today it is on the 2.0 version it's a lot less true you don't necessarily need to repeat um, progression in levels and stuff like that you don't need to redo the same content in order to progress level it's a different philosophy of the game generally that differs massively from the retro i don't want to denigrate it but i don't that's an old way of doing things and office 2.0 is a novel way of doing things yes that's true the optimization in retro is incredibly important in order to hold on i missed that the optimization in retro is important so you spend your game time differently than 2.0 it's a lot more heavily uh, invested in order to get to 200 it's very repetitive it's a game in the old-fashioned old-fashioned game um uh, i'm not sure what you're talking about in chat <laughs> i'm gonna sign you smart what's smart I want to find my old 129 drawings and bring them to a camera camera. <laughs> we, we have seen them in one of the podcasts. You've showed us uh, some of the old stuff that you used to draw. Hilarious. <laughs> yep, please do try that. Don't try, don't get. That's how it goes. <laughs> Gluto, be nice. Come on. <laughs> it's a game following the old it's an old-fashioned game. And the community after that were separated, but there were but there's an overlap. You can see that in the Temporis, where uh, retro players go to Dofus 2.0 and 2.0 go into the retro in the, uh, Temporis and retro. They're not incompatible, is what I'm trying to say. And now, 2024, 
the 20 years. Exactly. What can we say? As I've said at the start, since 2004, the game has been developed using Flash, which is web development, who since 2019 is no longer supported by Adobe. There has been no security updates, no nothing. And it was just completely arcane and old which didn't allow us to do half of the things that we wanted to do here's some silly examples if you wanted to do a menu with scrolling because you can't do that you have to parameter the bar and stuff like it's, it's so difficult whereas here in unity it's just a little drop drag and drop that you add to the interface and boom you've sorted it so a lot of quality of life things would have never been possible with um, without going to unity uh, before that, every modification for the interface was gritty and incredibly difficult, but no longer going to be good. For those of you guys who still play the game, know that when we get to the Bonta and Astrobes app, if there's more than three and a half people walking, the client is not good. <laughs> if you have two people doing a challenge, it's not a, an agreeable, as a beautiful way of um, consuming the game. And it's a shame because it's a game that is an MMO opportunity. We want there to be life. We want there to be many players. We want maps to be full. So the necessity to change technology was more than evident because we had more than reached the limitations of the Flash client. So... Uh, oh, wow. This is incredible. We have gone down. We had stooped solo as to do little... Uh, how would you call them? When... You DIY a solution. You know, the uh, the little people change them into the, the creator mode to change them into little bulls and stuff like that to walk around and not lag the map. Whereas we know that in Office you spend so much time customizing your character, cosmetics and stuff like that to get transformed into a little monster. Ah, And it also brought us new opportunities. So... We were talking about a new motor that is called Unity, a new engine. This sporting was a technical necessity, as we said, for us to be able to show you new things. But it was also the opportunity for the production team to take a pause for a few seconds and think about everything that needs to evolve. A technical, uh, a technical porting and evolution of the game without bringing you anything new. We could have worked... Five, we've worked on this for five years. Might as well bring you something massive. So graphically speaking, we took the time and the opportunity to reanimate every single map and change the characters. We had so many limitations on flash on the body. Two-dimensional graphics. We always speak of two-dimensional. Uh, two dimension. You can't you can't animate anything other than that two dimension. We had some things that were completely disgusting. The hand. Yeah, the perspective is not game. It's not good. Uh, some stuff is disconnected. We couldn't do any more with this. It was terrible. We hated it. But the will is always been to bring you new types of skeletal bodies for the characters that are cleaner. So we went over all of them. And here, I think it was emotes. Please. <laughs> Go to the next slide. <laughs> we had a good rhythm, we were doing well. <laughs> but globally, at the level of the skeletal bodies, it was a good opportunity to go over everything and smooth it out so that it's a uniform skeletal body for our classes that will allow us better mobility and stuff like that and avoid stuff like that, like on her left arm, to have these connections every time you animate something. So for those of you who know certain emotes, like the lay down on some characters is terrible. Some legs are completely disconnected. I'm seeing people in the chat that are memeing this, but <laughs> I highly recommend not trying this in real life because you might lose your arm. Yeah, it was terrible, disgusting, not good looking, but we were limited by flash. So here we've reworked the animations, but also the visual of the classes. We've redone the design from scratch. Here you have three presentations. If you click, we will have the dates. 2008. So, really, on the complete left is what we know now in the game. The visual that exists since 2004. Slight improvements since 2008, but hasn't changed since. 
some new classes that have reappeared recently have different designs because they, they've been made in recent time. So when you put an IOP and a Foganaut, completely different. Next to next. 2021 was the first time we've released some new content in 21. We had, I'm going to be completely, I'm going to be completely uh, transparent and honest. We had a back, a massive wave of backlash. What are you doing to my classes? Stop touching them. What the hell are you guys on about? <laughs> you incompetent bastards. I'm not going to tell you the whole load of insult that we've got. But it was a big moment in our research. Because through your feedback, we thought, the idea was not to present to you a final version in 2021, never touch it again. We thought we will take your feedback and use that as a um, base to batter ourselves. So 2024, will this be the uh, last and final thing we will release in 2024 at the end of the year? Maybe not. We are still working on improving everything. But while we've started animating everything and bettering the movement and stuff of classes, we thought, why not continue the improvement on all sides, not just the actual thing. The skeletal body that will be able to evolve over time as well. So these skeletal bodies allow us to add. Oh yes, because we have a good actor. If Flash did not want to add new faces, so a laughing crowd does not laugh. Whereas now, it might be silly, but now we have acting on every character, so every emote could be accompanied with new facial experiences and stuff. And this is something that we can imagine adding to NPCs during dialogues and stuff like that. It's something that we definitely want to add to the game and bring to you, because it enhances the character and uh, experience. A static conversation with a static NPC is not great, but if you can have some life added to it, mwah. So just to finalize on this, uh, we've added new functionalities of uh, customization on the characters. So every character will have the opportunity to sort of bring about an incredibly thorough level of customization. Not just the cosmetics, but it allows you, the new engine will allow you to change so many more things to your character. Here we have new options on every character. So you can change the uh, shield, yes. But you can also change the uh, hairstyle, the back cape. You have uh, eight options of heads and stuff like that. Whereas here with Unity, the new artistic design, we have a lot more things that you can change. As I've showed you here below. So the five examples at the top. On your character, you can add more sort of head designs, but you can also add accessories like uh, the bandanas, uh, facial hair. We'll be a lot more flexible about the amount of things that you can add and stuff like that. But we've also added integral costumes. We have three, which are complex to create because you have to redo them and redesign for every class. So you create a design and you have to m change it 19 times to fit all classes. <laughs> you can see that. It's insane. Whereas here you can see the example at the bottom because they all share the same skeletal body moving forward in unity designing one sort of um, what do you call them costume will fit all of them moving forward and reduce the time so you can have more looks new looks fresher looks and more customized one so it's really the work of redoing the whole skeletal body that will just allow us to push this update forward with so much beauty and customization. Yeah. And we'll add new costumes. We're no longer limited to just the three we have now. Now, graphical evolution, the 15,000 maps. We have counted them. We haven't counted the dialogue lines, <laughs> but we've counted the maps because we wanted not only do all of them, we wanted to at least do a, an animation pass on all of them. So there was an environment modification. The first one is the map fight. When you start a fight with a mob, you start with a black uh, background and gray blocks like a chessboard, which isn't really good looking or anything. The maps are not good looking. It's just, it takes you about three turns to go to the other side of the map. Anyway, it, it, not immersive. And from a gameplay point of view, not very interesting. This is why we've... Uh, uh, Papi2G, I am not part of the Enkama team at all. Uh, now, we not only don't read the text, we're also going to get... <laughs> I really hope they remove... Uh, they follow through with uh, the... Uh, 
what is it called? The creature mode removal. It would be awesome to get rid of that and have everyone play the game with good graphics and hopefully everyone's machine manage. I'm excited to see some of the fashion y'all come up with. Yep, I will be waiting for that as well so I can just copy some really cool designs. Given that I don't have a single artistic hair in my body. <laughs> the female eye up looks insane. I think all of them, the shrouds are amazing. I think all classes were a hit, uh, Dabu. Gotta watch at least 72 hours. I'm gonna come up with something. Oof, ooh, Eslix is gonna be on it. We will see some uh, uh, game character design streams from Eslix for sure. <laughs> yeah, but we can't watch them until we all buy monitors that support 3 million colors or more. So we can finally see that it's purple, not black. <laughs> so we have added new things that we call maps, uh, fight maps. So from the portal of Unity, every map will have a fight map. Oh, what? Every area in... The Unity office, we will have map fights, like a pool of maps per area, between 3 and 5 generally. We will be able to top them up and change them at time, but it allows us to specialize maps for some areas. Here you can see some examples for some temples and maps, so they can have a soul, a, an identity, like some tactical maps up until this point. I've been sort of disgusted, not, not good looking, but we couldn't go far with them. But now we've reviewed the technique, the technique behind making them, and we've added themes and beauty to them for the tactical mode, for it to become the default. As Papino said earlier about the characters on the beta, the beta is also for us the occasion and the opportunity to get your feedback on these big changes we've added. Your habits will change, the way you play will change, we want to hear what you have to say about visibility, gameplay, and everything. And the second part of the big project is the environment to review animations. Exactly. We do have music on this. Yeah, we can hear the music. Yeah. Will they bring back Doppelons from Doppels? I have no idea, Potato. I don't think... I think that ship has sailed, sadly. You have a, a viable way of getting Doppelons that makes people interact with uh, bounties. If you remove the bounties, Doppelons from bounties, they why would you engage with them aside from the five people who go for full achievement? It doesn't make sense to reverse that. I think if anything, they need to find a new utility for the Doppels on top of them being um, in the progression bar that you need to get to 100. Not bring back something that has already evolved in a better direction, if I may say so. I think they need to think of some new utility and integrate doppels in quests and lore and stuff like that. But that's just my opinion. Baby crying, yeah. Premium house in Dofus Touch. Nope, I don't remember. I saw a post from Dofus Touch about a house to win. Like a sort of uh, <laughs> uh, competition they were carrying out. Where you could win the house. <laughs> Let her cry. No, she's got her mom with her. She's looking after her. Hello, Chess. Ah, oh, you want to eat my food? No, 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 no. You're not allowed to eat my tasty fish sticks. Crab sticks. Oh, yes, yes, I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, but you had to have a premium... Uh, it's closed, yeah. That one is a premium house. Yeah, I know what you mean right now. Only a few people can actually go to it and enter it. I know Sevi for a fact has access to it. <laughs> mm. He did go inside one day and I've asked him to document it for us. I think he has already sent it in the past, but yeah, for sure, we could ask him. Can you share photos from... Yeah, of course, come in, come in.
Nah, I'm all good, thank you. Still working on this beer very slowly. <laughs> you know, when you're ill, you don't chug that stuff. No. You go very slowly. Time for revenge. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to comment about that. <laughs> so here you can see animations, but you have to know that back in the time, back in the days, the game had zero animations to it. The music is coming from the footage itself. But in essence, we're gone over the 15,000 maps and brought some life to them. Every single one of them. Uh, these animations allow us to give and bring to you a new level of immersion a new level of immersion so if you take an area where you had uh, storms and stuff like that the you had to imagine you had to close your eyes to imagine the storm and whatever from the area but now we are able to bring life into the world and the advantage is with map map fights it allows us to merge the two. So if you test the game Unity in the, the Japan Expo. If you come, you will be able to see a fight on the tactical map. But also see that the map uh, evolves throughout the fight. And yes, this is something I have noticed uh, while watching uh, con other content creators that recorded the fight and everything. It is incredible. So the boss's HP is tied to the animation and everything that is happening. I'll give you an example. I'll show you a... Um... Let me show you this. So, this is at the start of the fight, right? This is what you see. This is what everything looks like. But if I skip... more towards the end of the fight, you see that the whole thing has gone darker. And you can, the speed of this rotating uh, thing increases. There's more electricity in the air. There's more zaps happening. Um, the wind gets stronger. The music intensified. And the whole thing is linked to the HP of the boss. And so they sort of designed it so that progression throughout the fight is not static. Not only do you get to see more of the area, and still have a beautiful tactical mode. But you also have a, an element. I will stop playing with sound moving forward. A visual and audio element to the fight that progresses throughout it. So it's more immersive. It more transports you throughout it. But I don't know how good that will be for every fight. And whether you can deactivate it or not. But I will be looking forward to seeing that and testing it in real life when the beta releases. I love the idea of a um, an immersive but also animated environment that progresses as you go during the fight. And that's something I have spotted in other people's contents. And I'm definitely looking forward to try myself because it just looks so cool. Imagine the map gets darker and more intense and the music gets more hype as you do a fight with Eternal Conflict or something like that. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. For example, if the monster releases a certain attack, the world evolves around it. Um... Maybe there's a version of the of, of the monster. You can imagine so so many things. Yeah. 
one where it's all dark in the entire fight, depending on the spell that he casts. Another one where you can scenarize, add scenarios to fights, and attach those to spells, percentage HP, and things like that. Now, as we've said, we are in the process of animating 15,000 maps to review the entire game. These are the last zones that we've produced in Pandala. And you can see it's, it's maps that... Even internally, we just love to sit down and appreciate how beautiful they are. Look at this Aquadala, peaceful, beautiful, incredible animation. And as we've said, we're at the start of this. We are in the porting to the new engine. But just think about what we will be able to create in three, four, five years. It's given us so much energy, so many ideas, because this is just the start. And now we'll continue with the bad news. The advantage is that with Unity we'll be able to work faster, but there are also things that are, well, there are things that are faster to implement. But from our side, we'll be able to add so many more things that we don't want you, we, we don't want you to think that we'll be adding content from the start a lot. Of, we will be able to add stuff, but it's not because we're in Unity that we'll be able to add more dungeons and areas in than usual, but when they come, they will be even better quality than the ones we have released, than anything we've released so far. It will be a great source of pleasure. And the last point, if I'm not saying nonsense, which is audio. We haven't talked about it. We've heard some music in the video, but actually right now, the sound is being completely redone in the whole game. We have an orchestra that is redoing music, re-preparing the whole sound base for the whole game, and you will be able to enjoy the game through the sound as well. And here again, the movement, the port into Unity will allow us to do many more things uh, in order to increase the immersion, bring more sounds and bring the world more to life through this new medium and here music is a nostalgic thing it, all you need to, to hear is uh, some sound about uh, the music from uh, Incarnum or Astrub and stuff like that and it just transports you to back in the day um, the guy who told us the, the team that is working on redoing the music has expressed how sad they are about the loss of some music. And some of you have noticed this in the chat, that we've lost the original music from 129 when they moved to 2.0. And I think this will be the opportunity to bring it back. So it will be redone for 3.0. So we're trying to see, we're trying to go back to the real old essential themes and they will all be read on in the symphonic orchestra and it is going to slap <laughs> this is what nostalgia is and we will bring it all to you so people in the audience were not able to hear the music sadly the rediffusion will be available just in any case and next thing the revamp so the interfaces the game is 20 years of age, so the interfaces, uh, there's things that have never evolved or very little. We lack options, customizations. We have to go through themes provided by the community. This is not our will, this is not what we want. So we'll use Unity to propose some beautiful graphical changes, knowing very well that loads of elements of the interfaces will be modular so here for example the color that you see at the top the bordeaux red that you can see at the top you will be able to change it with themes that we will provide you so these are some of the biggest changes one of the biggest projects in unity which are the interfaces we realize there's a handful there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah yeah Uh, yeah, so it's one of the big, we need to change the graphical aspect, but also the utility and usability of them. So many people have noticed this in Twitch and mentioned that there's a lot of things that we want to change. We, we don't have visibility in the fight. We can't visualize some things easily in a fight. and things. We'll be able to add new things, but we'll also be able to customize the stuff that you already have. So for example, the... Oh... So now, I have noticed this in, uh, l l let me show you it on, oh, oh, oh. right, so in the current version, you have to highlight a monster in order to see the stats, 
to see what the resistances are, how much his HP is, what his uh, AP parry and stuff is. Now you will be able to lock an interface of the mob. Let me show you. Yeah, here. So you can take a mob character or anything like that. And then you can pin it so that it's there. You can add it to the side or whatever and just lock it on one side. So you can always just turn your face around, see the resistance or whatever, and then play your turn. So this is something new. You no longer need to highlight or hover on top of someone to see their stats. But also, can you see something peculiar here? Look, 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 at, look at this. This is the end of turn. You can also move that one. It's no longer fixed or static to the bottom left. You can have that at the top of your screen. Every element will be modular, movable and customizable in the entire game, which is remarkable. Oh. So we can pin stuff like I said. It's new. We didn't have that. Whereas habitually you have to hover on top of them too and you lose the information the moment you move away. You also have a transparent, if you hit something behind you and your character blocks it, you can't see it. So UX, fight, exploration, lots of things will change. These are hallmarks of modernity and modernization in the game. If you look at the image here, the chat, the fight log, you'll be able to see it a lot more easier it will be more accessible for people who haven't played in a while or have never played it's difficult to see a game with a hard to read chat bright green and stuff like that so from a first go there's a lot of content but it's so difficult and we want it to be so easy and abordable easy to, to yeah and the end of fight interface is something else that will change so you see this very regularly in the fight and we found that it was lacking in terms of indices and indications what happened in the game, how much damage we've added, some stats and stuff like that. Here for example you can see some new tabs. Not only on the recap of the character you can see a lot more stats but also you have new, more details, richer information detail that you can change with the alliance skills and stuff like that. So we want it to be something that is anchored in the social aspects of the game on top of just did I drop what I was fighting to get or not. So in terms of timing, we will do a Q&A, but we're nearly at the top. We want to give you some indication in 2024 and beyond. For those of you who were in the cross mono, there weren't so many leaks because we've already, <laughs> already given you enough. So in essence, we can already tell you the beta opening, which will be the 13th. If you went to the stand, you will have seen it. It will be Tuesday the 13th of August. In nearly a month from that day, which is nearly three weeks now. This will be the first time you will be able to get your hands on the beta. It will be available to people that are subscribed and it will be a very long beta. It will be from August to December. We will try and get as much feedback from you guys as possible, like I've talked about it before. Uh, we want we want your feedback. Tell us what you think about interfaces, the fight, balancing for some things, classes and everything. Just tell us everything you are thinking. That's the objective and idea of getting along better. Find bugs, work the bugs out, but also we want it something that we do together, not just something that we bring to you. We want you to tell us what you want. And that was the big day to communicate, the 13th. I've added it. I think I have already added it. Events. Yeah, the beta opens. If you're interested and you want to get pinged on the day, it will be after the release, after the um, Tuesday update. You just have to press interested and you will get a notification on Discord on the day of and it will pop up like this, like here, to remind you that the beta is open and whatever. So you can go and uh, check it out. It will be the first time that we will have... Put our hands on it. For those of us who didn't manage to go to France, we will be able to try it for the first time. But you have to be subscribed in order to try it. And it's something that we will cover plentifully here in the chat. That's it. I'm not going to tell you the exact date, but it will be towards the very early period of December when we release the Unity. We will release new servers and everybody will be ported to Unity. 
The old servers will also be ported towards Unity, but you will have zero loss. You will have the bank, the breeding, everything that you have right now will be ported fully into Unity. Everything, the bank, the breeding, every activity that you have will be ported. And the game is 20 year old and we couldn't, it was inimaginable for us to make you lose your progression. <laughs> Stop it, Gluto. <laughs> Stop calling pink dresses. I'm scared. <laughs> You've already given me about 600 on every single character. How do you still have more? <laughs> right. So the idea is they could not fathom. Fathom. They could not possibly imagine uh, making anyone that has played the game for 20 years have to restart from scratch. So while there will be new... Uh, sort of servers if you want to try afresh if you want to be in a place without the effect of uh, 10 or 11 years of uh, idols i don't know how long they've been out this will be your opportunity to do so but they've also thought about everyone that has played and does, has zero desire to start fresh they've also decided to port all the existing servers into unity as they are at the point of transition so you will not lose any of your progression Yeah, so people who want to start the release of new servers is an important period for new servers that will be designed to last in time. It will be important for new players, but also if you want to stay in your servers, you will uh, you will also benefit, you can stay in your current server, but you will also benefit from all the addition that have been brought with Unity in your current uh, progression and 2025 we want to do a little bit of teasing but we're proposing some new pvm content i've i've announced a new dimension let's go let's go can, i don't know if you can hear but the um uh the people in the audience are screaming their bloody lungs off after he said that <laughs> many many new surprises that we're preparing because unity is really the star that will allow us to bring beautiful things to you and 2025 is the year where we will do that if you pass by the stand the encounter stand we've uh, increased two new mechanics like the score and the uh, spell variant this will not be present in the Unity release, but it will be something that we will add in uh, future games like uh, uh, Infinite Dreams, uh, Dimensions. We will bring some novelty to bring pleasure to the existing players and people who enjoy these game modes especially. We are good with time before we get kicked out. A new one, a new one last thing. There's Nintendo F228. I, they're talking about where to find them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll be able to test all the three new games if you go. If you are, at a minimum, a fan of the Crosmos, you will have plenty and we are happy. All the production teams will be happy to have you over the stunt, so don't hesitate, pass by and say hi to us. Right, Q&A, Q&A, Q&A. If you have questions, there are microphones just in front of you, right, left, pick them up. It can be a bit intimidating, but I promise you, we will answer everything. Let's go. I love this Q&A session and you will see why. Yes, new dimensional, divine dimension like uh, Enurado, Zelorium. There will be a new one added in 2025 to complement the current existing ones. Welcome to the chat, Jean. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> It was, I wanted to know, so the beta in August, will it be standalone or will it be the in the current actual servers? It will be on dedicated servers, the release of new servers, the mono and multi-account that we talked about at the end of the year. It will be, it will be the climax, if I can say, with the Unity release. The objective here is the client and everything to be ready. But for the beta, it will be a debug version on the beta, just like any classical updates. Uh, the the format will progress to, towards it. We might add the classical characters onto the beta servers. We might have fresh uh, restarts to see how the first few weeks uh, go. And we'll also add free loots with uh, P NPCs that will give you all the gear so you can test everything uh, as you please. Two little quick questions. How come Dofus Touch is so fluid? It's also Flash as well, or is it Unity? No, 
No fish touch separated from. Oh, what the fuck? I didn't know this. Welcome back, Shadow Fox. The guy ask is asking him, how come since Dofus Touch separated from Dofus 129, which is in Flash, how the fuck is it so fluid and seamless and beautiful? And I was like, nope, it's not on Flash. Because they've separated, they went to Unity much faster than we did. And uh, because it's a smaller game overall with a smaller community, they were able to do that in less time. And because it's a mobile thing, it's 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 easier. Yeah, it's it, it's unimaginable to have a outdated dead technology like flash and mobile so they moved on to unity and that's why you have better performance in uh, touch than uh, on Dofus 2.0 evidently as you could tell wow here you're doing the whole content of flash trying to move to unity which is a lot of content 20 years of Dofus. so all the new content that will come will be highly developed and uh, You'll have more opportunity to do more incredible things later on. But will there be any opportunity to bring new content that is compared to the old one? That is the biggest risk that we have. It's a will that we have from our side. It's to do updates frequently and to update the old content. We talked like uh, the scenery that you will see on the Japan Expo. The map that evolves throughout the fight, right? The ambiance that gets darker, uh, lightning bolts and stuff like that. Uh, these are things that we want to add in uh, marking elements within the six primordial dofus, some boss fights. We don't want the old content to be completely forgotten and useless and forgotten, let go. And the new one to be fresh. With something that we will do over the long term. Little updates that we will slot and slip right in. Like Gobble Dungeon, for example. Which will be... Uh, we will start with uh, the Gobble 25. Maybe Neleza will be one of the first ones. Then we'll go to the Schaefer. I don't have the exact calendar, but it's something that we will do throughout the years. Yeah. So they will go over all dungeons to bring them to life. I want to complement this point right here. Just uh, linked to the title. It's a 20-year MMO. And every update, we are trying to find a good balance between... Uh, we just want, it's, it's finding the balance between PVM players that want new content, PvP players that just want to hit each other, and the infinite dreamers who want new modifications on, in the world of dream. It's really hard to find a good balance. So here, for example, if you had to make the choice for two years to review the entire dungeons, to add scenes and stuff, people who don't care about the scenery and do, don't do dungeons will just be disgusted for two years because they don't they're not getting anything so we will try to balance content with new dungeons new content scenery for those that want that vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, professions will we have new professions in unity or will some professions be redone will there be a complete revamp like a fisherman for example uh, that struggles to find its spot amongst others like it could be gathering or all of them it's a big projects that we want to start we won't do any new uh, professions and until we revamp the current one um, so we don't want to add while the other one so the current ones have a lot of problems like the crafts the recipes are not good we have some gathering um uh the the gathering professions were some resources collectible or ch level 60 or cheaper than resources level one so we want the gameplay and the economy it's one of the big revamps that we want to do later on with the unity release not before it's not something that we will start since december i can tell you that now for a fact but it's in one of the objectives that we want to start and the maging 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 at the time we have no modifications on it we have massive ergonomic changes on the interfaces we haven't sh showed them now so far but the uh major interface will be incredibly cool and we'd invite you to test it during the beta but gameplay wise nothing is changing we also have a topic of reflection when it comes to uh the count and number how to the progression of professions but we haven't done anything to, to, it's all in the thought phase 
We have some questions from the Twitch live. Will there be an inscription phase for the beta? Well, there will be a newsletter that we will circulate where we explain everything how it works for the beta. We very likely will have either a, a um, you know, where you subscribe, where you join, li like with new servers or Dofish Touch, where you join a queue, where you pre pre-inscription, pre I don't know what the name of it in English, where you subscribe, you've put yourself down and get added to a pool of people that will have first access when it gets released. They are thinking of doing either that or an equivalent system where people can sign up. Register! Let's go, sniper! That's the one. Snipers. <laughs> Let's go. It's possible, but we will communicate everything to you. So for a temporis, it's more complicated to open a new server when you have a big influx of people. But for the better, we can open a new one if you have more people. It's easy. The up the idea for the dope, the better of Unity is that everyone that is subscribed should have access to it. That's the idea that we're in. But if we need to open servers on the fly, we will do that. No problem. Uh, I had a question at the level of Tuesday updates. <laughs> It's a big topic that gets asked all the time. <laughs> Every Tuesday, sometimes you have uh, hour-long updates, sometimes where you lose the whole day of, of, of um, subscription date. So, essentially, on the long updates, like exceptionally long ones, like this Tuesday, we compensate with a full day because it was fully lost. I don't know if the announce has been done by the community manager, but for this past Tuesday, you will be credited the full day because you've lost a full day of sub. For the second one, whether Unity will bring some changes to this, we are trying to pass changes server side so that we have... Ooh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They haven't yet. I think they will very shortly, yeah. So they are making modifications server side, so they have less need to do these Tuesday updates. Or if they have to do them, they are less heavy and quicker. I can't guarantee that you will have Tuesday where all the updates for two years will be 30 minutes long. If I say that, I will have to do another Mia Culpa <laughs> live. <laughs> and that's not the idea. I don't want to do that every Tuesday. But the idea is to update our service from client side, from server side. Uh, for those of you who played recently, between January and March, we had some really complex months. And we sat down with the team and discussed it. And we thought, there is no way that we can propose this level of service where every Tuesday there's a massive problem and long maintenances and stuff like that. We need to do something about it. You don't deserve this. We shouldn't be doing this to you too. Even if it's not perfect. Like... Uh, uh, Last Tuesday proves that it's not perfect. A lot of updates before the current Tuesday were seamless, very quick. Uh, a few, like an hour to two hour, and boom, you were back. But now... Ah, uh, drop. Sorry, that's not a drop. It's a drop. So, while they have improved massively, they... Um, this last Tuesday proves and shows that it's still not perfect. So, in any case, if you lose... Oh my god, I've misspelled it again. <laughs> yeah, but in essence, if you lose a day's worth of sub or they feel like the maintenance lasted long... <laughs> come on, Eslick, stop it. If they feel like we've lost time, they will recredit it. I don't want to absolve ourselves from what happened last Tuesday. It was a complex one. It's, it goes back to the 20-year-old MMORPG. We have made a... Uh, we've moved... There was a piece of software that is a component of the entire game that has moved from version 13 to version 14. And upon release, sadly... Yeah... This is the challenge of a 20-year-old MMORPG. Whether you're... When you update tools, MySQL, Java, PHP, when you update any component, the difficulty is to update it without it crashing everything. Sometimes we change servers, new technologies, and things like that. These are complicated maintenances, but if the game is 20-year-old and stayed on the old technology, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing today. There are painful updates, but we are sadly 
obliged to do. There's another one I wanted to bounce on the previous point, the up the um, subscription. It, will the price change? This is something we've discussed internally. I'm not I don't want to say we won't increase the price of the subscription, but these are discussions that we're having internally. Honestly, I can't say yes, there will be an augmentation in the price, but if there ever is one. In any case, it will be announced early and it will never be a uh, a consequent one where we sort of double the price or anything like that. But yeah, these are internal discussions we're having and it will never be exorbitant. And, and I insist on if there ever is an increase, it won't be. Will there be an alliance slash guild update from Twitch? We're working on it. We're thinking about it. We can't give you a specific date, but it's always something uh, in... Uh, the guilds, yeah, guilds and alliances. The guilds will be more easy and quicker. So guilds is something we want to do. Will be uh, so guilds are more easier as a change, uh, as a thing to change and modify than alliances. I don't know why he's saying that, but he said the, now Papino is taking over to say that the guild revamp or change, he wants to bring it with the unity release. We can't guarantee it because there's a lot of things to work on. But yes, it's 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 designed for the end of the year. The hero mode, is it is it still in the plans? Yes, but not for the release. Will Unity 2.0, 3.0 available on mobile? Yes, but not upon launch. Yeah, I have one last question. No, yeah. This is the guy that asked about the... Uh, our, or rather, he he said I wanted to ask about the uh, subscription price, but that has been answered. Ah, what is the name that you're giving the game? Now we're talking about Dofus Unity, but Unity is the game engine. What, how are you going to call this new version? <laughs> and this is my biggest regret since the comp. We should have never called it Dofus Unity. As you say, Unity is the technology, but it's not the game. It's not it has nothing to do with the game. We stay on the Dofus name. It will not change. Whether the version will be a 3.0, very likely. But the logo here that we're using since uh, thousands of years, it's just the game Dofus. It has nothing to do with 2.0. So we stay Dofus and the brand Dofus as well. Ah, are you open to let the community provide interface just like we do now with the uh, themes? Will you be allowed allowing the community to produce its own interfaces and stuff like that? It is possible, but it's not in the plans anytime soon. Um, I'm certain in the chat people are asking this. Will you... Ah, the bot question. Are you expecting a more vigorous, vivacious... Uh, fight against bots will there be new technologies new ways to deal with them as we said with the arrival of unity we, we we can't tell you in any degree of detail it's not that we don't want to talk to you about this but the more that we talk about this to you the more we give deals to people who are the culprits there's there will be a lot of new security added in unity clearly we have three new axes that are developed in development the anti-bot fight the beta will show us, will it be effective or not? This is something that Unity will allow us to be more proactive on with the tools that it brings. This is Istos. I will be having this chap over uh, very shortly. On I think maybe Tuesday. I'll need to reconvene with him and, uh, and see when is a good time for him. So he has gone to the four days of J the Japan Expo, all of them. I'll send them a, uh, send them a screenshot. <laughs> Spotted. <laughs> yeah, so he is the international pub's emissary. He has gone to the Ankama convention, well, the Japan Expo. He spent the entire four days there. He has tested um, the game for us. He has taken videos, photos, he's met Manaya, he's had conversations with the staff and everything and we're going to sit down and prepare a conversation that will sort of summarize the whole thing for us so we can have uh, 
like a recap, a community made recap of what the Japan Expo is all about, what were the highlights, what were the cool things that he's noticed. We can see some footage that he's filmed, some photos he has taken. But for now, let's hear the question he has supposed. Have you decided to give um, rewards to incentivize people to test the beta and engage with it? That's a really good question. It's true. People like rewards. This is factual. <laughs> I don't know yet. It's not impossible. Generally, we work on the betas. We work where we know we won't have many players because we have uh, some less sexy betas than others. And if we don't have any rewards, nobody will go there to begin with. Here, we have loads of hope that there will be people going to Unity. Ah, the fact of you telling me that we need rewards for you to go and test Unity makes me sad. Come on, we've been working on this for five years and it's making me sad to hear this. Come on, we've been working on this for so long. I'm not saying that we won't add anything at all, that's not the idea. Even more so for the player that will be heavily invested and stuff. You, we know you and you surprise us uh, with the investment that you've put into the game. I'm not saying no, there won't be any, that's not the idea. But at the same time, I don't want it to be a better that we buy. It's not the objective. There will be a lot of things to, to thank you, reward you for the investment and stuff like that. It's something that we will keep an eye on because we want to do stuff like that. I'm asking the question. Uh, because it will be a beta that will be longer than the other ones. To stay invested for the whole duration of it, it's not evident. Yeah, it's true. It's not a two or three weeks one. But for this one, there will be different timings. So the rush in the beginning, then the import of your characters later on. For the rush, we might put some rewards so you can have something different for you to try it and abandon your current service. So the beta will not be just a long phase where you start from scratch. It will be something that have that will be multi-phased with more interesting things for you to do and try. Oh, one last question. Thank you. One last question. Uh, the configuration to use... Ah, oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on. This was the best question that was asked as far as I'm concerned. This is the central question when it comes to Unity. I do have a brilliant computer with a good graphics card that I think will do all right. Good CPU, massive amounts of RAM. I've got 64 gigs of RAM, mega heaters and everything, so I'm not worried. But I didn't have this computer all my life. In fact, I've only built it last year. And before that, I used to play on a MacBook. And the moment I decided to go from solo account to four account, the MacBook started dying. It couldn't cope with it. And it took me a while to transition into spending £1,600 on a bloody good machine that will handle four clients or eight clients and streaming and stuff like that. It's really difficult to uh, justify that much money to play the same game that you've played for 20 years so for me this is the central question not multi-accounted the machine if you're telling me you're redoing a thousand five hundred maps to be animated that means the the files of the game itself will be bigger so you need more storage and then when you run it everything is animated there's feedback stuff progresses loads of data so will your machine keep up with this new complexity that unity brings and Keep in mind, this is just the start. <laughs> they're, they're, it can only get better, heavier, faster, smoother. Uh, you see what I mean? This is just the, this is the transition. And I'm already worried about most people not being able to keep up in terms of machines. Will you be able to run eight machines with the absence of creature mode? Will you be able to play eight, eight characters uh, in your current machine? And he's asking him here right now with the new Unity upgrade. Will there be, like, sort of when you see a new game that is released, they always released a spec sheet. You need to have RTX 3060 minimum or you won't be able to play it. You need to have 32 gigs of RAM and 100 gigs free or whatever. What are the new specs? Because they haven't been very transparent about that because they don't know yet. It's still the testing phase. At least now you can write... That is a very American thing. There's no writing off here. <laughs> I can't write off anything. <laughs> uh, you need to be making money first of all to write off anything, Jay. <laughs> I think I will need to change my PC, Shavi says. Possibly. We don't know yet. Hello, Dersha. 
The game is going to run badly in December, but it'll run better than now and it'll only get better in the future. I really hope that you are right. I know that you know what you're talking about, Gluto, working in the game design industry and being one yourself and being a tech buff. I really hope that is the case because it would be devastating to lose a portion of your player base, not because they don't want to play or they disagree with the direction or hate the game, because they can't. You put them in a position where where you have to spend a thousand pounds or you can't play the game that you've played yesterday before the update. That would be gutting. But that's just my two cents on it. Let's hear the question again from Scratch. Right. So, the configuration will largely depend on whether you are one account, multi-account, or, or the hardcore ones that play eight. Actually, as it stands, we have a standard on multi-accounts is four that runs well on modest machines. When I speak of modest machines, eight gigs max in the RAM, you don't need 32 or anything. You don't need... And when we say modest, this is the definition of modest now for four accounts. Eight gigs of RAM maximum, you don't need to upgrade to 16, 32 or more. Graphics card, you don't need to have an RTX, you need nothing because RTX on Dolphus means nothing. We are vigilant on this topic. We wish to be able to communicate a benchmark to you very soon. With the beta, it will be much easier to make one for you. But as I say now, we are highly vigilant to that whether it's multi-account or single account that most machines run greatly and what i mean by that is 60 fps and that is fluid and we're also vigilant that it runs uh very well on other configurations like linux and mac but in practice it's not as evident as that to make a benchmark where if you have this then you will have this performance if you have this gear well we're waiting for the better to, to see the data and see the performance and uh, data that comes out of you testing it if you want eight accounts, you will need a good machine. Eight clients, Unity will be, we've talked about this multiple times. Uh, we will add some things like optimization for multi-accounts that will need uh, its own tools and its own optimization. It's something that we'll talk about later. But for now, if you want to play eight accounts, yeah. One last question. Are you intending to bring Dolphus Retro to Unity? No, no. <laughs> I'd love to. No, but no, it's not happening. It has been a five-year project to bring Dofus to Unity. Retro will be even heavier and crazier, so no, we're not bringing that. So the technology to make it evolve and stuff like that. So for the developers that know stuff like that, we're in ActionScript 2, which is obsolete and outdated to make it evolve in the next years. Yes, it's a topic, but to bring it all the way to Unity, it's a massive thing. No, why not? And I want to say that there are a lot of players in retro that play it that are so attached to the colors, content and feel and graphics of it. We don't want to change it for them. That's not what they want. They don't want the new animation and stuff like that. We want, we just want trees that don't move and be able to pound black rat day in, day out. So they want the legacy client. 70 frames, don't care about that and stuff like that. Yes, Maghrebi. It's a different community, it's a different game, they have different needs. The real needs for Retro as it stands right now is the anti-bot fight. The graphical amelioration enhancements, it's not something that they are remotely interested in. The anti-bot fight with Action Script 2 were highly limited, so yeah. Ooh wee! Thank you all for being here and see you later. That was remarkable, I loved it.